All right, we are live. We would like to uh, thank you guys for joining us on today's webinar. Uh, I'm Ken Miguel. Here with me is Mike Lugo. Mike, how you doing? Doing great, Ken. How's everybody out there doing? Good, good. So today uh, we are going to do a webinar mainly on our recorders. So this will be a essentially a training webinar on the Bolide DVRs and NVRs, as well as uh, going over the newest advanced intelligence, the AI functions in these units. Um, our, our goal today is really to, to uh, give you guys some knowledge because in this market, between security companies, integrators, installers, um, it's not just a matter of, you know, resolution, things like that. You know, you, you want to provide your customers with technology and technology that will, at, at the end of the day, help them help their business, you know, help them operate better, um, you know, peace of mind and better efficiency. Uh, today, we are going to have two audiences, you know, one with you might be a, a, a dealer that's already using or a distributor that's already using bowl light. And we would like you guys to get to know our, our DVRs and NVRs a little bit better. You know, maybe there's stuff here that we can show you that you guys didn't realize is there. Um, and also we want to make sure that you guys know all the new capabilities of the DVRs, NVRs, uh, AI, etc. Um, if you guys uh, have never used bowl light system, uh, what we would like to you guys to see how easy it is to use our systems. Uh, really, the the basic operations we're going to go over a little bit, but uh, everything is a couple of clicks away. You'll see, uh, and also the uh, advanced intelligence analytics. They're 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 very very good, uh, and we'll show you guys those one by one how to set them up and how to use them. Okay, so let us go to the next slide before we jump. We're going to jump right into the um, NVR. Okay, so these are the models that uh, we're gonna cover. The great great thing about the Bolide DVRs, the five megapixel hybrids and the IPAC 4K NVRs, they pretty much run the same GUI. So we, uh, what you see in one, you'll see another. You only learn one thing. Um, on the right, you'll see the uh, uh, AI features that we're gonna cover and which model numbers they're gonna be applying for. All right, uh, guys, uh, on your screen, there's a questions box. Feel free to type in your questions. We're going to answer them as we go through the webinar. So fire away. And Mike, the floor is yours. Let us switch over to the menu of the recorder. So what, what do we have here up? So this is our live view. This is our, our office here in San Dimas. Nice clear picture. We're going to be going over these. Which uh, model DVR is this one or so NVR? This is our eight channel NVR NXS NDNA. NDA. So NDA, that's the I'm sorry. Newest, newest model eight channel. Yeah. Okay, so when you fire up the, the uh, NVR, this is what you're going to see. Let's go over the layouts real quick. And Right now we're on a single channel. Uh, we want to show the basic operation. We'll, sh we'll show you guys the most important thing. So our goal is, if I'm installing this, what are what am I going to look for first? All right. So here you can show your customers. It's a drag and drop style. So if you want to just move them around, you can. Of course, you got your you know single channel view, quad view. Go back to the bottom. You'll see you know, custom layouts, you'll see, uh, uh, you can do a sequence. Um, and on the right, you'll see something pop up. That's, those are events that are happening on the screen. So whether it's set for motion or analytics are enabled, you'll see that nice Porsche right there. It will tell you, I believe that's a vehicle detection you're running, is yep. it? Yeah, yep. so you, you guys can already tell it's detecting uh, vehicles uh, crossing the camera. Mm. Um, another important thing to know, so on the on this main screen, on the bottom right, you have on the right, on the right, um, yeah, but do you see the information page? Um, we, so these systems, when you guys connect them to a mobile phone or computer, uh, there's no port forwarding. You just need to, on the phone, scan the QR code. The QR code 
you will see on the lid of on the top of the of the recorder um but also you'll see that qr code right on the screen right there all right um what else should they know about the screen so your p2p id is also right there so the vms software that we provide you the bolt as bolide vms to get a recorder on it you just type that in uh under p2p id and you don't need an ip address or you know a D dns anymore yeah yeah uh, pretty important to take note of the mac address at the bottom uh instances where we need to have a password reset or anything like that the mac address is very important for uh the text here to get you guys a temporary password or or something like that to get yeah. into the system yeah so if you are the customer forget the password we can unlock it we would need the mac address and serial number but it only takes a few minutes all right so after this what do i need to do i i need to set up my team date and time on my recorder so all your setup is go back to that so really your main menu is on the lower left then setup that's all your settings okay so you see uh these are the big menus system uh date and time there you go yeah. so you can do uh, change your date your time time format you either connect to uh uh, NTP, or and also you can set your uh, uh, daylight savings. And just a note: I know it seems really simple, and and but the time is very important. You know how many calls we get where there's, you know, we have uh, end users are saying you know, there's no recording, we can't find anything, but it's because the time wasn't set. Yeah. And so that happens a lot. Uh, we got a question here: the customer still needs to do port forwarding. Uh, we, they don't need to do port forwarding. Um, you literally just connect the recorder to the main router. And it will it will, it will connect. You scan it. Connect. Yep. Yeah, scan it. Yep. The Plug only instance would be if they have uh, a very strong firewall VLANs yeah. or it's port Fire specific. Yeah. So if it's if it's a complex network, of course, it's not going to work plug and play. That's you know, pretty much it's made not to do that. The network does not want anything like that. So yeah, only in those instances you'll have that problem. Yeah, but we've seen enough of this. Most it will just, it will just connect. It's it was one of the best things about our recorders. Uh, we've had that since like 2014 um very secure and it's just super it's super easy for the installer one for your technicians they don't have to struggle with that and the customers if they even even if they change internet providers they don't need to redo anything on the information everything it will just connect as long as they get internet connection correct yeah um so okay so we can ch change your date and time um go to multi-user right all right, so if they want to add a password, this is where they do it, or users. You get six users, different user passwords, right? Go back to general, output configuration. Oh, very important. Okay, so this is where you, uh, if so the our, our newest five megapixel DVRs and the newest, the 4K NVRs output 4K. So our, our, um, our uh, suggestion is sell them a nice 4K TV. Stuff's gonna look great. Yeah. Um, picture's gonna look sharp, menu's gonna look sharp, the customer's gonna be happy. Um, what's great about this new line of, of recorders too is they, they automatically uh, match the resolution of the monitor. So if, you know, before you have to manually do that, but yeah. now it kind of auto, detects the yeah, makes it a lot easier yeah yeah all right so i after i change the date and time i go to my camera settings right yep. so go to that's under channel um our nvrs are built-in poe plug and play you can also add ip cameras to them manually yep from a external switch yep and uh, to do that you see here's a switch mode i have it set to manual uh, by default it's automatic because everything's plug and play but if you do want to add a camera that is on another switch or somewhere else in the network you can change that to manual and you can see here i can one add all my information manually or i can just do a search and you'll see all my other network cameras come up so i have a bunch of cameras right here that if i wanted to add i can add but you can see i already have some added there um, very simple plug and play it's effortless uh, everything's pretty much done for you. 
Yeah, and so this applies also on the DVRs. They're hybrid. So if you want to pull in IP cameras, this is this is where you do it. Yep. Uh, go to PoE Power. That's something yeah. new. Yep. Explain to us what that does. Yeah, so PoE Power this is a good tool for installers. Um, if you're troubleshooting, you know, you have a camera that you plugged into the PoE, the onboard PoE, and it's not coming up. You can come here and you can see if it's pulling power for one and how much power it's pulling. And it also tells you you know how much power you have left you know for the remainder of the cameras which you have more than enough power to push in this case eight channels um yeah, yeah. all right uh now let's go to live so live is where you change the camera name you can change where the the timestamp is etc um next is image control image control is go up all right so you can actually i'll go to uh, ir cut mode I think this is important that uh, IR cut mode. You can set the camera to color mode only, black and white mode. So for example, it's in a you know lit area, but the cameras are still turning black and white and you don't want it to, you can actually change them to color only. Um, on this menu is also where you you can you know flip an image 90 degrees, uh, 180 degrees. Um, also where WDR is, you know, so for high glare environments, Turn it on. Uh, it will balance out the picture. Uh, it, everything will look more accurate and not as glary. Yeah. Okay. So you know, um, video cover is privacy masking. Now, so the the next thing would be the record schedule, right? Yes. You guys notice how we're quickly going from one thing to another. We want to make this. Imagine if you're installing that you want to be going in and out of menus fast and not too many of them, you know? So you go to record and then record, record schedule. And it's a grid, grid base, right? Yep. Grid yeah. base, 24 hour timeline, very easy. You know, you just fill in the boxes of what you want to record and when it apply. And you can also copy all channels. That's very yeah. important. Yeah. Then let's go to record settings. So rec next to it, the record settings. Um, Actually, this is pre. I can go to encode. Okay, so this is where you set your resolution, uh, recording resolution, frames per second, your uh, bit rate control. Um, so you can set our recorders to record in continuous motion detection, intelligence. Um, under continuous, there's a boost recording, right? Yes. Uh, can you uh, yeah, turn that on? Let me come on. Not a lot. You know, they they have to know that. Right. It's called ETR. So on an application where your customer or the project requires 24 seven recording, but you wanna save hard drive, you can have the recorder record in lower resolution and lower frames per second when there is no activity on the cameras and then turn up to maximum resolution and frames per second when you get those activities, You know, whether it's alarm, motion, whatever the case may be, it will uh, so you have recordings 24 7 but um only you know have higher res when there's activity and that saves you a ton of storage space yeah. Yeah. okay so uh let's look at motion areas how do you set motion areas motion areas yeah so motion area so, there you go so this is real quick everything red means everything is being detected with motion um if it's not red it's not being detected we get this question a lot what does the red mean you know or we have customers take the red off and say it's not recording because the red is not enabled so you want the area of detection to be red yep yep, yep. so if you want to if you want to disregard trees or the street you can disable certain areas yeah. of that i can clear all there you go so there, right now there's no motion detection another new so, another new setting that's there uh, with the ndaa cameras also that's pretty cool is and we'll go over more in depth into it but in the motion section you have a pedestrian vehicle uh, motion detection area so it'll distinguish between a, a vehicle and a person yeah. in the motion that's pretty cool so that'll get the whole picture yeah all right so that's the setup i mean that's you know that you guys know it's quick uh, we'll show you guys a little bit on, on the playback, how, you know, the, the steps to do playback, and then we'll jump into the AI.
So go back to the main, main screen. And then, so go to main menu, then search. So search is, you want to play back. All right, so you can do your calendar search, you know, select date, camera, filter the activity, then, so select one, play it. All right, so it's playing back. Now, if I want to back up, how do I do it from here? So very, very simple. So I want to do a, all right. first thing is my clip, what I want clip, to get. Yep. You can see there's two arrows here. I have a start, start time, time and end, end time. time. And I can just pull this of where I want to end that video along my timeline. And then you can see that the scissors that I originally clicked turned into a disc. If I click that disc, I select my type. Uh, MP4 is probably the most popular nowadays. Yeah. Um, so I select MP4. Sticker flash drive in, and that's it. Save it. Easy. There's my flash drive. Okay, and it's backed up. Very simple. Very, very easy. All right, and then you can also do event search. Go to event search. Event means, um, you want to search events throughout the day. So yeah. let's say do search events for today. You see thumbnails and you see the start of the video clips. Yeah. So the beauty here is you can double click to play them. You know, and then you can, you know, go through the video, stop, you know, fast forward, you know, uh, slow, slow it down, etc. Digital zoom. Yep. Uh, go back. What I like about this is if I want to back up. If I know what time I need to, you know, I want to search, I can just like select the clips. So, for example, select the first three clips. And then save it. Done. So I Same stick thing, my yep. flash drive and I go in there. Done. That's it. Yep. That's Easy, it. right? Um, there are also um, up here, there are so sub periods is the same camera on four different times of the day you yep. can search um a smart search uh let's do smart search a little bit so smart search means you're only searching in certain lo certain spots on the camera for motion so you know for example if you have like a important you know like a cashier like an expensive vase then you can only you know look at um events Areas. in that area yeah yeah go back to Tags, tags, you can tag videos, you know, if something's important, even on live, you can tag it and go back and replay that. Yeah, so if you have a incident, suspicious person, 10 o'clock in the morning, the whole day goes by and you want to go back at, you know, later in the day and be like, what was that person doing? I tagged it, I know exactly where it's at, it's easy for me to find. All right, so that's the playback, super easy, a uh, couple of ways to do it, and even, now let's we're gonna jump into the AI stuff. We're gonna go back to this uh, setup and playback because AI really makes everything easier. You're not, you know, your customer's not gonna spend time looking at motion events if they can just look for faces. So um what we have okay is let's let's go over it. So one one the one is the face recognition and face database. Yeah. So explaining what it is. You can essentially one look at you're gonna build a database, right? So if your camera sees faces of people, the cameras the cameras intelligently detects human faces, just like this. It's you know it's saving the hard drive. So you what you do is you're gonna allow the system to search for those faces, and then you can put names on them, just like we did here. So and then when they show up on the cameras on the camera again or playback now you have a database of people you can just search by name um etc and only pull videos of those you know people it could also be people that that are that uh, you're not familiar you know strangers you know pull that up from the from the recorder but um to make this happen any of the verifocal nda ip cameras you match up with the um NVRs with the AI face recognition, uh, you can do this um, face recognition. Yeah, uh, and you can, I can also export, I have multiple recorders, I can export that database and import it to another recorder. So I don't have to go rebuild the database if I have another recorder, you know, at another uh, office that I have. And, you know, I have the same employees. I just want to take that database, put it into the new recorder, and it's that easy.
you know, it's not much of a hassle to rebuild that. Okay, so how do we set this up? So let's um, actually let's answer a couple of questions. The motion the feature is run is uh, being the motion detection is run on the NVR. You don't have to go through the camera to do the setting, yeah. but it's on the NVR, not the camera. Is it possible to to add a note with the tag feature? So yeah, when you on the tag feature, when you tag it, you can add a. a uh, heading for it. A name? Know? Yeah, a name. Yeah. It's not too many uh, notes you can add to it, but you can give an identification, basically. Yeah. 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 Hybrid. I heard the word hybrid mentioned. Does that mean that these DVRs can support analog cameras? Uh, yes. So our five megapixel DVRs are backwards compatible. You can do traditional analog, which means the old school a 480 TV line, 700 TV line stuff. You can at any resolution. It will support um, 720p, 1080p, 4 megapixel, and 5 megapixel TVI, CVI, AHD cameras. Yep, as well as IP. As well as IP. So another question. So do they have hard analog ports, i.e., B and C? So the uh, the DVRs, yes. There's uh, if it's an eight channel, there's eight B and Cs. Plus, you can pull in four IP cameras, but the analog cameras are going to uh, connect to the um, the hard analog ports. Yep. Is there a way to set up a watch feature? Like if you tag Ken as a problem, then Ken comes back, it will pop up or send an email. Yes, uh, uh, we'll do that, Brad. Um, there is a, you can have it set up for alarm or email notification. Yep. Okay, so let's let's ask you let's answer that question now. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so how do you add somebody to a database? So how does it work essentially, right? Let's say we, we install the cameras today. How do I add my? How do I add myself? So the most the most easiest way is I want to import a picture or someone yeah. who's come through on my camera already. So that's going to be a local storage, right? Okay. And there's everybody who's came through the camera, all the different faces I have, you know, just just for today. I have a couple pages. Am I sorry to cut you off? Yeah. Let's go back. Backwards, let's yeah. show them which word. How do you get here? Okay, yeah, so the menu. So if I go to my AI, so right? you go to main menu, yeah, let's go to the beginning. Okay, so main menu, AI. Main menu, here. So this whole menu here, AI is AI. Okay, all right, so you go, it takes it, you back. Normally, there. it'll start off on setup and then setup. I'll go down to recognition, recognition, and then uh, database management. And then I want to edit my database, so allow list and a block list, and then a stranger list. So the allow list. It's really, I mean, a lot, you can do it, you can make it whatever you want. Yeah. Allow list is you want them in it here, you know, block list, you don't want them here. Strangers are faces that it's seeing that hasn't been yeah. bookmarked, right? All right, so let's add people to allow, okay? So here's my, I'm gonna import. So import, meaning you're pulling faces that are detected in the hard drive. Yeah. So I have a couple pages of faces. Uh, let's see, let me see. What's so you added me on there, right? Yeah. So. Here's Ken, I already have him there. So if I were added him, add him again, put okay. Now I can name him, you know, all the information that I want to add. Um, and once I do that, I can add additional faces. I have him here already. So that's what it is, all right? Yeah. Go ahead, uh, press that. So yeah, you can add all the information that you want. If I wanted to edit that, I can edit or move him to a block list if I needed to. And there's my block list, allow list. He's already on the allow list, so it's only going to be two blocks. So let's put it in a way where you dealers can explain to our customers how they can benefit business owners they have employees they have customers they have guests they can put their employees on their allow list they can put guests or guests will be strangers if there's anybody any crooks anybody shoplifted or something they can put those on a block list later on or maybe employees that they already fired and they don't want them around the building you can move them from allow list to block list okay so mike now you added me yep I'm gonna show up on the cameras. Yep. So let's let's get out of here. Let's go. Go ahead. Go right here. So Ken's gonna go. He's gonna walk through. We're gonna see a detection actually come through. Let him walk to the other room. There it is. It detected him right away. And if I wanted to go play that back, it's very simple. 
I can just double click and he's gonna come up momentarily. You can see him coming already. There it is, it takes me right to it. That easy, one simple click and I can see the face on the right hand side, Quick, a quick uh, view of that. So let's answer the question that we had. Can you tie this into email notification, recording or alarm? Yes, very good. Yes, so do do let me come back over here. Let's go back to our setup. AI. Okay. So now that I've enabled uh, the faces that I want and I want to send a trigger, now my alarm list will allow me to do. So uh, AI alarm. AI alarm will allow me to do a bunch of different things with all the different uh, things that I have. I wanted to do an alarm. I can click there. Now I can send emails. Send FTPs. Email. All right. What do they get with the email? So you're going to get a snapshot of the photo. You're going to get um, what it was that was actually triggered. If it's a face alarm, if it's motion, you know, all those, those different things. You'll get that, you'll get the picture. And then, um, yeah, you'll have all the information you need for that particular um, alarm trigger. Yeah, and also cloud backup, right? Cloud so backup as well, yeah. cloud. You can do all these here. So I get picture to the cloud, FTP, uh, file transfer protocol. If you have a computer set up to receive um, photos, you got that. Show the thumbnail, of course you want that. Um, yeah. All that good information. All right. So let's pull. So strangers, right? For example, strangers, meaning they're not on a, on any list. You can also have the do triggers from yeah strangers, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, another one is to import a picture. So an external picture, not from the camera, but from a picture you have of employees. Maybe they have IDs. Maybe they have uh, pictures from their phone. Oh yeah, there's a good one. So if they hire new, let's say an user hires hires a new employee, and they want to add them to the database, right? So you can what uh what file format and size do they need? So JPEG, um, uh, PNG those are the most common. Yeah, so you can add a picture. You can yeah. even add somebody from like a Facebook picture to the NBR. Yeah, I think I got this from my Facebook account this morning. I can go. I can edit this name. You know, I'll go along thing in there, but. I can edit the name just like I would uh, internal picture. Really easy to add. Or there it is. Success. Except now it's there. Very yeah. simple. And this is a deep learning system. So the more data it gets, the more accurate it gets, right? So for yeah. example, Mike, let's go to Mike. So if I if I want to I want to help the system become more accurate, additional images. Yep. Real easy for me to add one. Really, you can take as many angles from or, or external but you can take as many pictures that you can add to this so that way when mike gets in front of the camera it, it's from every angle it will detect them and it'll be a higher match from yeah and that's a good that's a good uh um question because you want to get the different angles uh you know someone might just be a side view and you want the camera to be able to distinguish that that's you know the person you're looking for yeah yeah we have a question what is uh, upload to cloud all right, so yes, actually that's a good question. So our DVRs and NVRs can actually you can see you can save videos to a cloud account. On the DVRs, it will be Dropbox. On the NVRs, it's Dropbox and Google Drive. Google Drive, yeah. So let, let's let's show that real quick. Yeah. Uh, Go to um, device cloud. So the the way it works is the the main the main, all the recordings are still being recorded locally into the hard drive, but you want to set up events, analytics events, motion events, alarm events. You can have it saved and then go to a cloud. So Gmail or Dropbox. However, you don't pay Bolide. You pay them for storage, and however much capacity you have, it will fill up and overwrite as you keep recording. Yeah. Yeah, um, we got asked if we can link to AWS. Not currently. Uh, it's Dropbox or Google Drive uh, cloud accounts uh, for the NBRs. Yeah. All right. So, how else can we take advantage of this face recognition technology? All right. So, if your customers, of course, you know, a lot of uh, you know these systems go in a lot of businesses. 
they can use this as attendance, as an attendance system. Okay, so the same concept of facial recognition, you know, we can use it to measure if employees are coming to work on time. So under, let's go back. So under the AI menu, there is yeah. a feature called face attendance. Now, if you guys sell this, this is really valuable for these business owners. They can look at the cameras. There's footage. They got video verification. They can tell them. So uh, let's see right here. And you can see on the top um, has it, you know, the date. Of course, I can. I don't have to do this certain date. I can do months. <laughs> You know, I can choose the dates I want. I can do a whole week. Um, and it'll give me the late, early absence. And then I can export that or email it. Yeah. So you, you tell the system, okay, there, this is the start time, on duty time. So you'll see actually there's a graph. And if they if they show up on the camera before the start time, then they're on time. Or after the end time. If they if they show up on the cameras anywhere in between, that means they either came in late or left early. Whatever the case is, you have video video footage of it. Yep, and a, and a actual uh, digital backup, you know, on yeah. uh, Excel. If yeah. You need that. And for yeah, for HR, you can export this at Excel. There's also a, a, a send email there. Yep. Send email. That'll whatever email you have set up in the recorder, it'll send it to that. And of course, the export. Yeah. I can export it to my thumb drive. And it'll come out as an Excel file. Yeah, but it's very cool. I mean, you got images. You have um, uh, it, it tallies late, you know, left early or absences if they didn't show up uh, the whole day on the camera. It, it shows right there. Really valuable tool. If you guys are selling, you know, you guys are selling IP camera systems, um, it, you really get a competitive edge, you know, selling these things. You know, they're, they're not just good looking systems. They're smart systems. So take advantage of that. Uh, for stores, we got repeat visitors, right? So same concept with the face recognition, but essentially it tells you, you know, you can set a minimum occurrence. So you, let's say you're a restaurant, you know, you can tell how many times the customer came in during the week, you know, or if you're a retail store, you know, you can tell how many times somebody, you know, some somebody's been going to your place. But uh, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. You can measure um you can you can you can look and find out who your repeat customers are and now you can say set them put them on the allow list yep. that can send you an email when they go to your store yep right so if, if that tells you hey they're here let's take care of them another new function that we just added is uh attributes so now you can search gender age uh, if they're wearing a mask, they weren't wearing a mask, if they're wearing glasses or not, or even their uh, facial expressions, were they smiling, were they laughing? You know, you can search those as well, just to help narrow down your Yes, your expressions, yep. yep. I got a question is, what GUI are we showing? We're showing the GUI of the NVR. Yeah, I have it on a uh, video card, so we're able to see it on the PC. This is the actual GUI of the recorder. Now keep in mind, guys. So we have the Bolide VMS. All these you can essentially do on the Bolide VMS. Yeah. Uh, today we don't want to do a webinar on both because it will take too much time. Uh, maybe we'll do the VMS on another webinar, but we want to focus today on the on the NVR GUI and all the capabilities. All right. So another smart new intelligent is the vehicle and human detection and all the applications that can apply using this right so i'm gonna have mike do okay so go back to the menu ai setup ai setup human and vehicle detection yep and so i just turn this on here okay keep in mind one one good tip um the cameras and the nvr it's you you pick either you want to run face recognition yeah or human and vehicle detection it's one or the other not simultaneously yeah correct. yeah so if you have a couple of cameras maybe you want to have some run face recognition you have some let's say you want to see license plates you, you run the vehicle detection the setup is very easy basically you so, just turn it on how does it work so turn it on i have two check marks i want to do vehicle or people i want to do both 
all this stuff is by default. So you can see once you enable it, really all you need to do, these boxes you see here are the minimum and maximum pixel uh, requirements for you to detect that, whatever it is you're detecting. Yeah. So that that's important because if you set the minimum pixel to a, a small area, that means you want to see vehicles from far away. But you know, the closer they get, the more details you see, right? Yeah. So if you want to set up in a set them up in, a, in an area, see how Mike has the camera. It's low. It's actually the angle is not right. It needs to be straight at the. At yeah. the if you want to see plates, got to be straight at the vehicles. See, it's sideways. But um, what this does is uh, it um, actually you do have some recorded I do. license yeah. plates, right? Yeah. What you're doing is you're ignoring all the activity except for vehicles, right? So let's let's go there. Let's check yeah. that out. Let's go search. So oh search playback AI human vehicles. I'm gonna do this let's do yesterday because I did a lot yesterday. Let's go to the 23rd. All right, so I want to search, and you can see I have a bunch of vehicles and humans being detected. So I want to look for you know. A particular incident. I'm gonna go. You know, I'm going through my vehicles here, and I'm looking for. There we go. So I want to find a good license plate. I'm gonna come here. What I'm looking for. Yeah. I'm gonna double click that. Right. And I can digital zoom. I can get a little closer, and I'm gonna wait. I can see. Bam, right there. Closer, nice clean license plate. I found the, what I was looking for right away. I seen, oh, that's the car I'm looking for. I was able to do the playback. Nice clear license plate. It's, I mean, it's very simple, very easy. It's yeah. Two clicks. And so I'm, I'm able to find what I want. In enabling the vehicle detection, every vehicle has a license plate, right? So, uh, we we recommend doing the rear plate, but you can see yeah, on the time you can see the a lot of vehicles don't have it in the front. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but you can see here that's how you do it. Uh, you also see activities here of humans. So yeah, disable vehicles. Search. Now you're filtering to only humans that uh, shows up on the camera. Yeah. So ignore humans and only do vehicles. Yeah, so all the humans are gone and only cars are showing up so very easy to use yeah so can can license plate numbers be detected and added to a watch list you cannot uh, actually there's the, there isn't a database here for license plates uh what we suggest you do is turn on the vehicle detection where you're getting clear shots of plates and set up the email notification yeah. so that way uh your customers getting the license plate numbers in the email so they can always have that if they need to go back and if they have footage or something happens they always they can go back to their emails and have screenshots of all the plates that have come through the camera system yeah 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 and you know there's some you know we we have systems where these um the the face recognition and the license plates are not used for every single channel right yeah. you can have this in like critical areas and you know have it running where where they need to run. Okay, so uh, on so on top of the AI, is that it for the AI? Pretty much, we do portion? have we do have uh, the yeah the you, of course you have your um, line cross detect and your perimeter perimeter intrusion. Yeah, which is not new. We've had this for quite a, quite a bit. Yeah, but the key is. Um, not a lot of people know, like our DVRs actually have analytics. Uh, we have a question from uh, Brian there. Can you use analog cameras with our DVRs? You can, and not only you can, you can add analytics to them. So you can add like a trip line to uh, a camera from 2009 and have it be sending emails whenever somebody's crossing that, that trip line. Yeah, yeah. So the, the new feature that is on the the, line crossing and uh, intrusion is that you can distinguish humans and vehicles now before it was just you know whatever crosses that line or enters that that area it's going to tell you but now you know a bird goes by or, or you know 
leaf flies by, it's not going to detect that. Or if you just want to do humans or you just want to do vehicles coming to an area, you're able to do that now. That's a new feature with the, with the perimeter intrusion and line crossing. So that's pretty cool. Uh, what about uh, suspect track? Suspect track. So that's, that's a good, good uh, question. So uh, we talked about the, um, so we're gonna bounce back to face recognition. There's a feature called suspect tracking. So if you have a layout of a store and we wanna know where this person has been, you can actually set up, okay, so he set up the camera there. So for example, you have a, you know, a bunch of cameras, you can actually track and it will actually, draw lines of yeah. where this person has been so you can go back and yeah so if I, I had another camera i have him at the entry if i had another camera you know leaving then as he walked through and it detected the faces as him walking through it would show the next one here and it's real easy to edit i can hit this edit button and then i can add my cameras i just drag and drop you know wherever i have my face recognition cameras yeah. at along my my thing here no, boy, from the edits, and then when I do a search, it'll tell me where he went, and then I can see a physical um, image of how he walked through the building, or or track him through the the locations. Yeah. Um. Another question. We had a question here. Do these work with any Onvif camera? They do not. You need of uh, the cameras that have the AI in, embedded in the chipset. So ours the part numbers have to have the ai on them which is all the very focal uh five megapixel and 4k cameras okay. yeah um heat map yes. what is heat map it's not temperature um heat map for example you guys sell this to like a grocery store right they want to know where high traffic areas are are in that store you're gonna use a heat map to see which parts have the most traffic. So our demo room, the red, red-ish areas have the most foot traffic and you'll see them in red. The least busiest parts are in blue, yeah. All right? So how does this uh, work? You know, if you go, yeah, customer, let's say the store owner or business owner want to see one let's say uh where do i put these uh end cap you know these um where do i sell end caps at then they can kind of go to their camera if they have one like facing the entire store and they can see which areas are are, are um busiest um they can also you know of course they can measure daily what else can you do on the on the report so yeah you can do i can do it for the whole month i only had for a couple of days so we wouldn't we get that whole but yeah. Yeah, you can do it for the whole year. And so we do, there's also other statistics, you know, like face recognition. I want to go and see how many, how many people from my allow list came by, how many people from my block list came by, how many strangers came by, and what times they came by. I can also do it by camera. Same thing with the vehicle human detection. You know, I want to see how many, how much traffic came through. It's going to give me a graph. I can also export that graph of what's going on, as well as um, cross counting. I didn't, that's not set up because we're using the other AI functions, but it'll tell me how many people came through an area, you know, or, or um, hit a line, right? Hit a line. Yep. Let's say exactly. you put on an entrance or an exit. Yep. So yeah, now cross in, cross yeah. out, I can do both. Keep um, in mind, the, the heat map is part of the human and vehicle detection package. So you cannot use this with face recognition yeah. on the same camera. Yeah. Um, you have to set it for human and vehicle detection and then use the heat map for yeah. that particular channel. Yeah, so I can also, you know, if I wanted this, I'm looking at the heat map and I see my areas, but I wanna know what time these people came through. I can switch to the time and it'll give me a graph of, you know, it looks like 10 o'clock, I had the most people coming through. So, you know, that can be a situation that you will help your customer out. Yeah, and you can export uh, Excel with a heat map? Yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah, so you know, keep in mind this this stuff. The beauty is none of this stuff you're paying extra for. You guys buy the cameras and the NVR. Everything is built in. There's no licenses. Nothing. Everything is built in. You know whether you use them or not, it's all built in. Yeah. And we're doing this webinar 
so you guys know that they're there and you can sell those features so you can sell more camera system grow your business get a get a competitive edge um you know against your competitors um we got a question here it seems the camera test cam mounted is fairly low the what is the best angle or max height for license plates like a walmart has a 24 foot ceiling and we would need to drop the camera to what height so that depends on the application depends on what you're looking for the they, cameras are very focal so you can if it is a high ceiling you're able to zoom in it depends on the situation yeah, yeah so some some so if it's high use a camera with uh, a long focal length so you can but you can't do a digital you can't rely on digital zoom for a license plate it's got to be a we have a 5 to 50 bullet that will do the job i mean on a actually we do have one up here like uh, from a how many how many feet high is that uh it's about 10 about 11 feet high 11 12 feet high yeah, like, yeah. but you, you do a physical zoom zoom yeah. Um, a, a very common for license plates would be like entrances or exits for like apartments or hotels. If you notice, most of the time there's an island there with the name of the apartment complex and there's cameras there very low, like same height as like where an SUV's license plate will be. And it's always facing the rear license plate Yeah. because when the car stopped by the gate, it gets a very clear shot of the plate. But like ideally as, as same height, as the license plate if yeah. possible if you if there's no way to go around it then use a camera with a big focal length yeah so so but you do need and and angle wise you saw the live footage the camera uh, the car was going at an angle you can yeah. have that yeah you want to have it in front yeah yeah on mike's um recorded footage it's fairly straight enough ideally straight ahead from where the plates are Get to pass by license plates you know people think it's a camera thing um mo a lot of it really is the angle field of view you know it's like your eyes right if you can see it yeah if you can read it then the camera can see it and can also you know be readable yeah Are we missing anything there? We yeah, cover everything. We got everything. We got all the new bells and whistles, all the tricks, all the cool stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, that's those are the AI functions. Um, hopefully, you guys uh, were able to um, see that th these are very powerful recorders, um, easy to use. We're going through the menus. We're in and out of menus from one to another, and it's always like a couple of th clicks away. Uh, we had questions on the networking yeah you don't it's easy to set up online that the boat the app is called bolide quick connect and is available for the app store and play store the um uh let, hey, can you can you show the our audience where the they can find the bolide vms yeah, yeah so vms should be on our website let me go uh, You guys can have, um, type in your questions as we go. We'll, we'll, we're uh, we're pretty much done with the pre with the training, and then we'll we'll um, answer questions now. Yeah. So our website, uh, bolightco.com. Go to the resource tab and downloads, and you'll find all of our downloads here. Yeah. So the Bolight VMS is right here. Yep. For PC and Mac. PC and Mac both. I use a Mac, and it is the same version as PC. Yeah. Same exact version. A lot of times it's different. It's going to be, and also the VMS is very similar to the live GUI, the actual GUI of the um, recorder once you get into it, as well as the web GUI. So it's pretty universal. It's not too confusing. It doesn't look different. You're able to find the same things in the same areas. Uh, very user friendly. Let's jump. Let's jump back to answer this question about RAID. Go back yeah. to the NVR. Uh, that's a good question on about RAID. Um, it's actually we can do a uh, so set up set up uh, device. You can actually set up a drive for redundant recording, redundant right? Recording, yeah. I only have one in here, but so you can see here we have a so it's redundancy not, disk. It's not exact. Is it's not what RAID is redundant? Yeah. So it's not it's not a RAID, but it works like RAID. 
So it's just a direct copy of your hard drive. One fails, you have a backup. Yeah. So it's not like, uh, you know, you don't need the three disks for RAID. It's just a direct copy. So we don't really call it RAID. We'd rather call it redundancy. Um, yeah. But it works just like a RAID. Uh, also, do you need IE to view videos on a browser? Or what browsers are supported? So IE, IE is the way to go. Um, there any special plugins needed? The, the plugins will, you will be prompted for the plugins as you go to the GUI from the uh, web address. You just need to enable your ActiveX functions. Uh, we don't have too many customers using uh, the browsers anymore now that the VMS and CMS are so um, much like the recorder and so easy to use. So we tend to have customers download, but there are instances where customers need to use IE still, still available. A lot of people think that IE is going away. It's just a support for IE. IE still will still be around, so you will still be able to use it um, if needed. Yeah. Now, since we're here, another, then we'll just bring this up really quick. We have a smart function. We can check the hard drive. If you're having hard drive errors or you suspect the hard drive is, is acting funny, you can do a check and it'll check all the different um, functions and things that your hard drive will do. And it'll tell you if it's in tip top shape and what's going on. Uh, if they already have existing on VIP cameras, uh, do any of the AI features work on uh, non bolide cameras? They won't work. So um, you have to have the cameras with the, A the, the bolide cameras with the A AI capabilities to work, the AI functions with the bolide and VR. You can bring in those on VIP cameras, but you're only going to get the uh, video stream recording and motion detection. Yep. Um, not the uh, analytics or the AI. Yep. You have a question here. Does Bola, the, the, what is that? Oh, does it work with a bolide the fixed lens? No, no, the yeah, the uh, the part numbers need to have the uh, AI at the end of the part. Yeah. All right. So that's all the questions we got. Uh, we want to thank you guys again. Hopefully the last 45 minutes, we're able to uh, share with you guys uh, a lot of knowledge, learn something about our our recorders. Uh, and like I said earlier, our, my, our goal really is to give you this information so you, your sales team can go out there and sell better intelligent, more intelligent systems, uh, but that not only look good, but also help your customers monitor their business, you know, go back and look at attendance, you know, look at how busy they are, um, you know, or maybe save the crooks and, you know, prevent them from coming back or disgruntled employees from coming back. Um, and, you know, their, their, their surveillance system really does a lot, a lot more than, than uh, they used to. So, uh, we did record this webinar, so uh, we will send you guys the uh, recording and feel free to forward that to your colleagues, buddies, and anybody else that you think would benefit from, from the information. But uh, again, thank you for joining us today. Um, hope you guys uh, like what you saw. And if you guys have questions, go back to our last slide. That's our, our um, email, our website, phone number. We got social media, Facebook. Uh, we have uh, uh, camera foot footage on and videos on YouTube. Um, and you'll see Mike's email on there, my email on there. If you guys have any questions or, or uh, feedback on this webinar, feel free to send us a message. All right. Thank you, guys. We're going to um, end the webinar, and I hope you guys have a good rest of the day. Thanks, guys.